Okay, here we go. Sweet. Harry Morton, how you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good, thank you. It's uh, it's grey and windy, so it's 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 autumn here in obviously in the UK. Well, but uh, that that sounds that, about right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're in uh, you're in London, or or where are you? Not anymore. I used to be. I live now in Somerset, which is like two and a half hours southwest. Um, we're kind of a stone's throw from Stonehenge, kind of. Okay. Uh, if you you know some old rocks is a useful landmark for you. Very cool. I've I've only done the tourist thing in uh, in London. I got to see more of more of England. Yeah, it's good. We're famous down this side of the the, the world. We're famous for uh, cider and cheddar cheese. Like, uh, oh, so yeah, that's I'm good. not far it from the town like, of uh, cheddar where it, where it originates. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, cool. it sounds so, yeah. like the the Vermont of of England. It's yeah, it's not too <laughs> dissimilar. A touch, yeah. not quite such brutal winters, but you know we don't get the skiing either. So you know, there you go. There you go. All right. Well, we're not going to talk about uh, cheese and cider. We're, let's let's talk music. Sure. Um, you know, cool. th- this is. I think this is going to become. I think this might. Th- this whole Open Threads podcast might turn into me inviting all of my web industry friends who happen to be musicians, so we can geek out on <laughs> on music. That that awesome. I would be I totally fine with that. Great. Um, I mean, basically, when I finish up work at the end of the day, I spend all my waking hours that aren't with a child uh on youtube i think i've completed music youtube at this point if there's a <laughs> if there's a video reviewing a piece of gear that i haven't seen uh, oh man you know, oh dude I, i've gone down that rabbit hole so many times my uh yeah my my youtube um you know recommendations is, is full of just gear reviews and recommendations all right so let, let's actually get into that so um you know there are so many different types of people who have hobbies in music so how do you define your interest in music and my understanding for just, just from the little bit that i know about you with with uh, music is um uh other than the fact that you run like a podcast hosting uh or podcast production uh company we'll get into that in a different episode um called lower street which is which is amazing you guys have done awesome work but yeah we're going to talk about music on this one so um you're like into elect- electronic music beat making mm-hmm. synths what, right. what are you into exactly that so i um i like so music has been a big part of life forever for me so i grew up my mum was a piano teacher i went to school focused on music was terrible at anything academic and just really kind of focused on the arty stuff um went to university and studied music technology um, oh cool so, did so I. yeah cool so i was just doing a lot of like composition and production but it also kind of led me into the kind of more technical side so that's what got me into post-production which is what led me into the kind of things that eventually led to lower street in in kind of the podcast side of things um what so kind I of always, music were were you always into listening to so back when i was a kid i was um it was pretty broad when i was a child my mum was like massively into classical music but also kind of a lot of motown and you know classic classic kind of british pop stuff um so i was you know pretty like average generic background but it was when i got to university that i really started to nerd out on like jazz in particular Mm. um like i did i was a drummer growing up and so my teacher kind of got me into herbie hancock and like those kind of you know like a lot of kind of classic funk funk and, and and stuff like that so i was always into like and the music i made when i was a teenager was this like super cheesy funk stuff which is that's funny awesome. by the way because I, I don't know if you've heard of a guy called lewis cole he's from la super cool musician and he basically embodies everything i wanted to be when i was 14 except and is as lame as i was when i was 14 but just totally owns it like he's like this totally nerdy geeky guy uh super funny amazing music anyway so that was that's what i was into i was into kind of like jazz and funk and all that kind of stuff and then when i got to university because i was like on the technical side of music if you know what i mean like we were into production and engineering and stuff that's i kind of inevitably led me down the path of synthesis and kind of being behind a laptop and doing kind of um that kind of electronic style of stuff super interesting the the Um, funk stuff like like for me like i i basically come from a background in like rock music um in general Mm -hmm. but like but then um i did you know, I started venturing into into jazz a little bit with guitar, and, and but like the funk side of things was always what drew me. What, what was like the most interesting thing about, especially like harder rock, like that that has like a funkier side to it, like Chili Peppers, yep. Rage Against the Machine, sure. you know. Yeah. Um, and then I and then I got into like hip hop, and and also like the mix of like hip hop and rock, and like a lot of that is just driven by like, you know, funk. And and I, I went through a little phase with with Herbie Hancock and that kind of stuff. Um, nice. 
Yeah, it's and kind then, of exactly um, the same for me with like the. I, it inevitably led down that kind of hip hop path as well, and so for me, it's like this blend of hip hop and and kind of electronic jazz and that stuff. And it sounds like yeah, you had kind of like that classic yeah. rock vibe to it. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, for sure. So what led you to aside from just being a musician, like when you went into school with um for for like music production, like what what were you thinking there? Because I, I I went through the same path. I have a degree, like a bachelor's degree in. Uh, and audio production. Um, nice. What, yeah. what were you hoping to, the most to pursue? Useless degree one could ever wish. <laughs> that's, to that's exactly what I learned when I, when I got into the workforce. Yeah, um, it's just like I, basically when I left school, I was like, "Well, what do I like to do? This is all I want to do." So I guess everyone goes to university. So I guess I'll get a qualification. I think if I was if I was able to mentor myself now, I'd say just go work in a studio and learn what the industry yeah. is actually like. Like was that was what wonderful... you wanted to do, like like studio or live sound yeah. or? No, definitely not live sound. I was definitely yeah. more of a um, like, uh, yeah. I, I'm I'm I, I love live music, but it's never been like the thing that I love the most. I'm much more of kind of a nerdy headphones on, like really Same. geek out to, to music, you know. Um, and so, uh, so that's that's kind of what I was always about. And um, yeah, it was just, I mean, university was just an excuse to indulge my favorite thing. And I just figured like I'd figure the rest out. And that's kind of what happened. So I, you know, I initially thought I wanted to work in a studio in a music production kind of environment. Um, quickly kind of established that I'm like not the most talented musician and I don't have the best ears in the world for like, you know, cause like I went to school. I actually, before I went to university, the school I went to was a music school. Like it, it had a real kind of slant towards that. And there were some like, next level talented musicians who mm -hmm. you know you know perfect pitch was just table stakes for this for these folks you know they're just like they 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 were music um yep. and so i was like really aware of like what my limitations were um and so where i kind of really thrived was that kind of nerdy middle ground of like the tech and like being experimental and like using different things in different ways um and um yeah and and that's you know that's ultimately what led me to go down the kind of post-production path of like okay maybe like it, this is music adjacent i'm still using my skills here and i'm actually i think the way that you can craft sound that's not like a musical sound in in a creative way that tells a story is is every bit as musical in my mind as, as mm -hmm. kind of like making a beat kind of thing so so, so you got into like things. mixing and mastering and yeah exactly that whole process yeah and sound design and sort of working with synthesizers to kind of think of a sound in your head and then try and make that or kind of mm. foley which is like you know taking a microphone out into the wild and like recording yourself i don't know the, the obvious thing is like crunching through some leaves with your feet and recording that and then putting yeah. that to picture like, or whatever like sound effects for picture that, that's exactly, awesome yeah when i was in um i i i sort of had the same path into uh university um and pursuing a, a, a degree in audio production because i thought that i wanted to literally work in recording studios for for my career um i i i'm the same way i love that I love being in a studio, whether it's a real studio or at home, like, and the process of, of creating and perfecting, um, a, a full production, you know, getting every take and then, and then editing it and mixing and mastering and, and all that. I mean, what, one thing that I learned, and I, I do like the, the technical side of, of producing and using all the tools and software and stuff like that. But one thing that I did find is. I'm, I, I maybe I'm a little bit of the opposite from you, whereas like the the music side comes more much more naturally to me, mm -hmm. and also the the creative composition side is is what I was always drawn to, cool. but the um, a the, the the audio production like having an ear for that like really getting the frequencies perfect and getting right. the bass dialed in I've I've always sort of struggled with that, and then mm -hmm. the other thing that I struggled with is just electronics in general like right. I I never like got like there was so many like, like hardcore electronic classes going through yeah. uh, music school. And it, and it was like, I didn't do well in those at all. Cause it like, yeah. it was so far from actual music and it was like, you know, um, totally. And I, I can relate. So we got into, we were taught. So I'm not that super far on that side of the spectrum either. Like I'm, I'm like super middle of the road on all these things. I'm like a Jack of all trades, basically. That's kind of my thing. So like um, we, we were taught uh, kind of not only how to, use how to craft sound using synthesizers but then actually how to sort of in the theory behind how to build a synthesizer we use a program called max msp i don't know if you've ever heard of it but it's like mm. super technical and it's like programming a synth in the same way that we might program you know any SaaS product um but it's much more visual and it's and it's what you kind of have these little modules and you connect them mm -hmm. anyway 
uh i found that just to be just that one step too far away from like the actual creation of music i my create like my mind of all the ideas i could come up to which up with for it was just like incredible it was such an exciting idea but then yeah. the thought of actually sitting down and figuring out the maths behind how to make these things interconnect and do what you want was just too too much one of the things like with sound design and synths, i i actually got into it more recently just in the last couple of years like it wasn't mm -hmm. until my late 30s that i actually started to, to learn how how synths work and how to how to design sounds and and use them and um i i really regret not learning about that uh, learning about sound design when I was really in it back in my twenties, you know, mm. um, I sort of just, it's weird. I, I was aware that it's there. It was, it was part of the music that I was making, but I was much more into like samples and just composing stuff for, I got into like, uh, composing music for, for film and TV and, yeah, awesome. and, um, but just using like, like, sa like different sounds, but not actually creating them with synth. Yeah. So, so like, I, but I think it's so easy to get like drawn away from like, if creating music's what you love, it's so easy to dive down and this is what i do is like i even from my hobbies i procrastinate like i'll go down all these rabbit holes of like how is it made and what tools should i use and like trying to perfect the system rather than actually making the thing so actually i kind of like what you were doing is actually way better i think is just like cool these are the I, tools i have at dude my i struggle just do stuff just getting sounds it has been i feel like the last several years were so I've moved away from like trying to pursue music as a career and trying to be real serious about it. And now, uh, you know, I'm, I'm older. So it's like, I've, I've got this thing in the web industry. So now I'm like, it is purely a hobby. Right. Right. So I, I'm curious to know how you, how you deal with this. Cause you, you run a, a, a full-time business as well. Right. But the thing with music, creating music as a hobby is that it's, to me, it's like, I could just, you know, play those guitars behind me and just pick them up and play for like an hour, which I do all the time. Mm -hmm. But if I'm trying to create and produce and, and actually like come out with something that can be like published or something like that. Yeah. We're talking about like months of deep creative work. Yeah. Um, sure. And, and then I, I, I just get so sucked into like just getting the sounds and, and choosing from thousands of sounds and, and using synths and dialing it in and, and buying gear and testing it out. And like, when when it's like i don't have the time or for that you know like i can't just sit for two hours on a saturday and churn out a whole a whole finished track right you know um so then so then i'm left with like well i can't even do that at all like i could only just strum on the guitar a little bit so man i can so relate like i spent all of my 20s going if i could just afford this gear uh i'd be able to make just the best music and all i did back then was like i'd have a job from time to time and then I'd, i would just be like at home making tunes all the time and it was and i miss that flow state that you would get into because you're just like there's nothing between you and just making music and 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 now i find it really hard to to kind of context switch from work and then come back and make that music yeah but if it's, if, it's if, like if the, that, a lot of creative juices that because i put so all much. that juice into my work on, right. on the internet exactly. and it's like I don't have anything left over to to put into it. Totally, but if my yeah. twenty year old self could then look at me now, that can like just turn around and go, "Cool, I want that synth. I'll just go buy it because I've got the money." Because I'm like a yeah. late thirties dude with a job, uh, like I'd be pulling my hair out because it's like the stuff I make. I feel basically what I I feel right now is that unless I can really devote myself to just nothing but exactly like you're saying to making the perfect album that I wanted to make when I was twenty five, I feel like I'm I'm kind of like one of those those like 50 year old dudes that wear the leather jackets that wish they were in the who back in the day and they weren't and so now they finally have the time and capacity to do those things and i'm like shit am i turning into that it's, yeah. that's, this is what it feels like so we definitely are man we are <laughs> yeah like, um, like you know, some of the music i listen to is made by like you know 19 year old kids that are just like they're at school and they're making just mind-blowing stuff and i'm like holy crap like yeah i'm Totally, I, I have well and truly missed the boat here. <laughs> Hundred percent, man, and and I'm literally, you know, going through YouTube, like looking at the reviews. Like, I could totally afford all all this gear, to, yeah. but I like just last week, I was actually going to buy a whole bunch of. I was going to buy a synth. I was going to buy all all this different stuff, and I'm like, yeah, I could afford it. I could click this button on Amazon and get it sent to my house tomorrow. Yep. But I do not have the time to to get any real use out of this thing. You know. No. No, and then um, again, those 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 twenty year olds that are defining genres and creating music that's never been created before are doing so with the same shit I had when I was twenty one, which was absolutely nothing. You know, I tell myself mm -hmm. I need these like beautiful monitors and this incredible equipment, but actually, if I was really creative and doing something different, I'd be able to do it on a shoestring. So it's yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway, 
Um, I mean, what what kind of stuff are you into into making when when you can make stuff it's like um, yeah. Uh, yeah, and and like what what would be like your goal when trying to create music? So right now, I've really kind of so I've gone through a period of I've got two young kids, a three year old and a nearly two year old, um, and so basically the last two years has been more or less a complete write-off but the the youngest is now getting old enough where i i maybe have like two minutes to rub together every now and again and so really the goal for me is just to get to a position where i can get back into that flow state like i said because I, I never knew i didn't label it a flow state back in back when i used to do it because i you know I didn't know about it but but that's really what it was like there's just nothing mm. between you and that creative process um, and so now I spend so much of my time kind of like getting everything ready and like trying to get myself into the into the zone. Um, and really, so that's that's uh, my only goal right now is just to make stuff um, and just to be in that making process. Um, so, uh, yeah, ultimately, I've got so many ideas of things I'd like to make, you know, records, you know, albums, EPs that I, that now we can put out across. You know, I used to just hang out on SoundCloud all day. There was an amazing mm -hmm. community there. Um, but now like we can just, you know, use DistroKid and put everything up on all the different platforms, um, yep. right away. So you can literally make a record the same as it's, it's kind of mind blowing to be honest. I miss so, the idea of a record. I, I like, I always yeah. hate the idea of like these artists just putting out like a single or even an EP with like four tracks. I'm like, that is not, you, I, I want 12 plus tracks that I can totally. go start to finish. Uh, this you is know? a problem I'm experiencing a lot at the moment. So I love the, the Spotify, um, algorithms i i'm a i'm a what's the word the something o file you're always looking for like the next thing i don't like necessarily mm. listening to the to the same albums again and again and again of course i have my favorites that i come back to but i i'm always looking for like the new um and so the spotify i'm the of, opposite i just stick to my you really tried and true like this stuff is and i listen to the same stuff over and over. And, and i every time i try That's to awesome. discover new music i'm like man er, this is like me getting old obviously it's like everything today sucks <laughs> <laughs> and everything from a couple de decades ago is is the best. Like, come on. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, I mean, I agree. By the way, like, I am well and truly stuck in 2010. So, like, uh, that is definitely true. Um, but uh, but anyway, to your point about singles, like it, that, it really frustrates me because I love all these things that spit up new new artists, new idea, new things. But so often I'll be like, oh, I love this track. Like, what's what album is this from? And I click into it, and it's just a single. And it's like, yeah. everyone seems to be doing that in in singles. Maybe EPs if you're lucky, or there might be a B side like mm -hmm. the B side of, of your Spotify MP3. Yeah. Um, I've had so, this thing in my mind, like, like that I've wanted to, I don't know when I'll have the time to actually do this, but I, the, my music creation in my thirties and now forties is the, the goal is to create, um, I guess you, you might call it an album or like a string of tracks that I would put up on Spotify or something and, and SoundCloud that is intent, just instrumental music. I've, I've always been an instrumental yeah. music person, especially yeah. when I work, I can only listen to instrumental stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So I would love to just create a bunch of tracks that are awesome to to work to. Um, oh, cool, yeah, nice. Uh, like in, in the creative zone, right? And Because that's yeah. what I listen to a, a lot um, when I'm working. So, and I, I did that maybe three or four years ago um, when I was, working in on, on audience ops and audience ops got to a point where it was running uh, largely without me. And it was before I got into doing zip message. So I, I wasn't really in startup mode anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a lot more free time and I, and I was actually spending a lot more time in, in my basement studio. Um, uh, but then, then I got into zip message and then like all my energy just went into that and I sort of stopped. Right. Um, sure. but the, um, that that would be like a goal for me is to like produce stuff that I could see myself tuning into like on repeat while I'm working on on the web, you know. Yeah, um, awesome. I love that. But it's, it's like I, I it's thought so about hard. doing that myself a, a bit as well. Like, what do I like working to the like? What what music do I get the most kind of benefit from or utility from? And like, what is there not enough of out there already? And why don't I just go and make some of that? I think that yeah, I'm I'm really into that. Um, uh, what kind of yeah. what let's let's talk about gear i mean what what kind of what kind sure. of stuff do you, you have lying around over there so uh well not a, not at work uh this is my my office where i am right now um my increasingly dusty desk at home which uh is is will be getting more use uh but it's not been so much is um i, I went through a phase so to answer your question before what kind of music do i make i, I was brought up on kind of hip-hop jazz electronic so i'm kind of in that 
spot between the three. So really into people like Flying Lotus, um, who some folks may have heard of, uh, Hudson Mohawk. I'm trying to think of like, it's, I'm, I'm into like pretty nerdy, like niche stuff. Um, but it's it's really that kind of electronic instrumental hip hop stuff. Jay Dilla mm-hmm. was a huge influence on all the stuff that I'm I was listening to. A about. lot of um, Ronald Jenkins these days. Oh, nice! Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ratatat. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, a lot of stu- random stuff like um, I'm trying to think what else. I don't know, but like stuff yeah, like that, cool. like is is like totally that's, that's like a lot of that's a lot of nice. synth, lot just like heavy like composition, just like good songwriting, but it doesn't have any words. Um, yes, it's, exactly. it's really interesting to me. Yeah, yeah, for sure, I, I absolutely love it, and uh, it, it, yeah, obsess over that stuff. So, w- what do I have to make it? I went through this phase, this real obsessive phase of of like I spend my whole day staring at a screen. I want to get away from screens because I so I my mm-hmm. my digital audio workstation, my door of choice is. Uh, ableton live mm-hmm. so i produce everything in there um or i did and i was like i need to get rid of ableton i need to like just be on a desk with some stuff that i could with just buttons and physical knobs and just like yes and do that which has this um, and that's why i've completed music youtube because i watched all the stuff on like Dude, which things do i buy you're describing like my whole past two months i i I'm like <laughs> I, I actually never got into Ableton, um, weirdly enough, but I, I was into Pro Tools a lot when I was younger, and then yep. and then Reason, and then more recently, uh, when I picked it up again, I got into Logic, yep. um, and uh, and a couple of software since on there, um, Serum, I got into, yep. and a couple other stuff like that. Um, oh, cool. Uh, but I had the same thought as you, like just a couple months ago now, like yep. there are too many, th- y- there are endless options when you're in software land. On, on sounds so many and, and it's kind and of production. depressing They're... as well man because like I, when i was a, sorry i'm interrupting you but this yeah. is, i'm passionate about the shit because yeah. like i was my whole thing when i was early 20s was lo-fi right because i didn't have the money so i wanted to like embrace that and make lo-fi hip-hop that was kind of the stuff i was into so it was like really mm-hmm. like cheap sounding but like gritty and amazing and so that was partly because of the tools i was using and sometimes i'd like take things and record them onto a cassette tape and then back into the computer to get that yeah. kind of grainy feel to it and it was like really cool but now there are plugins that you just like switch it on and you've just like everything sounds exactly like it, that stuff that we had to go to great lengths to create in the past we don't have so, the, the constraints anymore you know right so suddenly i was like well then if i could just make anything then like you know like why should i yeah so my thought was let's get back to the roots let's like get a really nice keyboard let's get some synthesizers some drum machines and like have it all external but what i can tell you it turns out it seems like you didn't make that purchase and before you do i would encourage you to, to consider it because what i found was it's just another layer of like okay now i've got to learn this shit and i got to like figure out like I, I my goal what i've realized after buying some of this and now subsequently putting it up on ebay is like my goal is to get into that flow state and making music and actually what i'd done was remove myself from the screen sure like that's great but actually remove myself further from that creative thing that i was seeking like mm-hmm. i just spent more time going oh for christ's sake why does this midi not go here and why is this audio not? yeah going? you know it's just like yeah. way too complex and so actually yeah i, I mean just decided screw it it's more screen time but it's it's my screen time you know so you went back to like the like a like a da it's back to ableton because i just know i can switch yeah. it on and make stuff right now you know that, that's sort of where I landed. I mean, I'm, I'm, I still just l- lack the time, but, um, but part of my challenge with it was like, all right, when I'm in Logic or when I'm, you know, with, with all, I got, I got like all these like samples and stuff. It's like I spend so many hours just picking sounds, like they're, mm. they're you know, just like clicking through like a hundred different snare drum sounds. Like, why am I doing <laughs> that when I when I should be creating something, right? Yeah, um, totally. And so, yeah, like. And and my thought was, I started looking into these. Um, I thought I started looking into just buying like a hardware synth, and then I looked at like all of them, and I was like, well, this one's got that. That that one looks good, but it's super expensive. Do I really need that? And then and then it's like, then I started looking at you know I'm, I'm watching TikTok with my kids, and all and all these young kids are doing these like looping stuff now, right? Like yeah. like maybe that maybe that's a way to like rapidly create and have yeah. the the limitations of like. You gotta just loop it and, and create something. Don't sit there for hours picking sounds, right? Yep. Um, thought about that, but yeah, just a thought. Just just clicking yeah. around YouTube, fantasizing. I know. It, 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 I know. <laughs> Basically, what I'm realizing is there's no there's no magic. Like, yeah, I don't know. Again, for me, like the goal is to get into that creative that creative space. And well, like, what kind of hardware stuff did toys. you uh, did you get into? So I got. Um, 
I mean, this we're really alienating our audience here. So you know, for <laughs> like, there's probably like three. Oh, like the, the, the three people who are actually about. geeks about this stuff are going to love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I got a. Um, so I'm really into Electron as a brand. If you know Electron, so they create this. Uh, they've got a thing called a Dig Attack, which is like a little groove box. It's like this big, and it's just takes samples in great for making beats but you can kind of do some melodic stuff with it as well and it's very immediate very kind of hands-on i still i'm not selling that it's it's wonderful it's a really cool thing mm. um, um then i got like 1010 music is um this this brand out of america with a, they've got um a blue box and a black box the bl black box is a sampler and the blue box is a mixer and so those became kind of a bit of a hub which everything went into um, and then on the kind of sound source side, I've got like a Novation Peak, which is my main synthesizer. That's a wonderful thing. Um, and a few smaller kind of um, hardware synths, which are, are kind of like cheaper like things to kind of mess around with. Nice. Um, so you record into that into that other box, like or, or are you, yes, you recording can record into, into the blue box? Yeah. Okay. Um, but honestly, like I I haven't made a lot of pro like this is something I've done over the last two years. You know when you're you know woken up at 3 a.m yet again by another child and you can't get back to sleep so you're just like okay my escape is going to be music and then you get all this shit and you don't have the time or the energy to do it and so i've not i i haven't used any of this stuff to the extent that i should have done whereas again i yeah. switch on ableton again i've got my innovation peak which i do use and i'm just making music right away and it's amazing you know so yeah i, I mean I, I was really thinking fat. i want to look through, i actually want, still want to try to achieve this dream of like record and create without using the screen because i was looking into this mm -hmm. um just a few weeks ago um and i couldn't Real, find a Reels good to reels making a comeback man you should get real to get real, into right? tape, yeah. you know <laughs> <laughs> i mean it I also do... forces you as a musician it forces you to nail the take right i mean Dude, you could get into cutting 100 percent. just like do the take right yeah I mean, I mean that's why i was really looking at these uh like the the loop station thing where, yeah. where it's like um and actually that that red pedal down there is is a looper but that's like a one oh, cool. one okay. single loop um, they, yep. they make one with like five, um, but that, that would enforce those like limitations. Cause I, dude, I remember a, a, a 14 year old version of myself where I had the, the, the old blue Tascam four track yep. recorder, Amazing. even before, before I had that, I, was, I just had a regular stereo with two tape decks. You record yep. one and then you, you overdub to the other and it, and it like loses yeah. quality every time you do it. Um, man, I, I miss that. Cause it's like, and, but then once I got the four track recorder, yep. it was like, I can get ideas down fast. Mm -hmm. I'm limited to four tracks, you know, um, yep. and it's just, it, and it, it makes you beautiful. commit, right? Cause then you, yeah. you, so let's say you record like drums on three tracks and you bounce them to the fourth track so that you've got three tracks spare again. You're mm -hmm. like, well, that's my mix. That's my take. That's my mix. Or, you know, you make these sub mixes and, and it kind of just makes you, makes you do stuff. And I think, you know, again, with software, it's so easy to just kind of tweak to infinity Yep. Um, and actually maybe what we need to do is just hit record and do it. You know? And then even with sounds, I mean, you look at a band, like, um, if you listen to rat rat a tat, um, mm -hmm. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce their name. It is. Yeah. Um, they, they are essentially like three or four sounds and they like in terms of like their, their guitar and synths and, and drum sounds like they, they just commit to those sounds and they, and they write all their songs using, right. using the same sounds. Like they're not reinventing their sound with every with every track you know um yeah. and i'd love and to love get that to that point where have... it's just like i commit to, to the, these are my favorite sounds let's right. write 12 songs and it's your these, signature you know? it's your it's got yeah. your 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 dna in it and i love that because it's funny because again the hip-hop thing the, a lot of a lot of the hip-hop thing is always about the, the new because you're looking for that new sample right because back in the day mm -hmm. people would be digging through the record shops looking for like yep. that r b track from the 70s that no one yet has sampled and mm -hmm. creating something that that is fresh and so there was always this desire to find new drum sounds, new samples, new textures, new kind of, you know, sources. Um, but actually, as I think about some of the favorite producers that I listen to, they use that same electric piano sound on basically every record. And they use that same kind of lead sound or that the bass is very similar from track to track. Um, and I, actually, I think just developing a, a palette as an artist, if I could be mm -hmm. so grand as to call myself that, <laughs> I think would be just like actually a really good thing. Um, and, and again, like just like you said, it forces you; those constraints do force you to be creative in other ways. And so I think, yeah. if, like, okay, cool. How do I make four tracks that are distinct and unique, but using the the same sound sources? Um, I think that's a really interesting challenge. Man, this is dangerous. Now, now, just having this conversation makes me want to go spend <laughs> a it. bunch of money on on random gear that I will never have time to to use. <laughs> <laughs> oh.
Um, awesome, man. Well, uh, Harry, I, I mean, we can we can just geek out all day on this stuff. I want to hear your stuff, by the way, too. Uh, uh, what? Oh, I was about to I was about to say my my SoundCloud handle, but maybe I'll save that. <laughs> we can put it in the show notes if I just if I change right. my mind. But I'll share some stuff with you for sure. Okay. All right. Cool. I'll I'll share some really bad stuff that I that I created a few years as well uh, a few years awesome. ago. Um. All right. Well, Harry, this is this is a good one. Let's uh let's let's talk again soon. See you on the other side. All right.